I'm Christy. Today I want to talk to you about when two become one. When parents dream of the future for their kids, many times it involves dreaming of the time when they're married and they have kids of their own. Now, like so many other heirs, special needs often changes those plans. Over the years, my hope or dream or wish for AJ's adult life has changed. Way back when, I thought that he'd get married to a neurotypical woman who would love him for himself and I never stopped to think about whether or not they would have kids. As he got older, I realized this woman would have to be a very special woman to love him this way. Over the past few years, I've realized that this dream is rather unrealistic. While not completely impossible, the likelihood of it coming to pass this way is pretty unlikely. And I've accepted that. Okay, so it helps that AJ has recently said that he doesn't want a wife or kids, as he puts it. Well, I guess that takes care of that one. Of course, we'll see what the future holds. Now I should pause here and say that I'm making the assumption that individuals with special needs involved in these choices all have some level of mental impairment or some other issue that prevents them from being able to make fully thought out decisions that a neurotypical adult would be capable of making. Now, if that doesn't describe your loved one, then please adjust your thought process accordingly. The one thing that I have consistently thought is that I really don't want him to marry somebody with special needs. Now, I know what happens and it can be a viable option for some. If everybody involved in those situations is happy with it, then great, I'm happy for you. But to me, having two individuals with special needs marry increases the likelihood of complicating many life choices in areas that are already quite complex. In many cases, there are so many instances where mental impairment means that they don't fully understand all of the implications of the choices they want to make, even when they think they are fully capable of making these decisions. Now, another aspect of AJ marrying someone with special needs is considering where they would live. Now, personally, I don't think I'd want them living with us. Okay, I know that I keep talking about how AJ won't live with us forever, but someplace my mind is gone, so I mention it. We'll get to that part in a minute. But I also don't know that I would want them living with her family, or at least having to live with her family. And yes, I've considered the possibility of them living on their own in a place in a living community. I just think that there are so many concerns about the real life issues that this would raise that I'm hesitant to want to go there. I don't know that I can explain it any better than that. It's just never been something that I've wanted for AJ. Now, if the day comes that he starts talking about marrying someone, I'm obviously going to have to revisit this topic and see where things stand then. Now, maybe part of the difference to me is that I've never contemplated AJ living with us forever. He's wanted his independence for years now. And honestly, I think that's part of what's driven me to develop this philosophy for his life that it'll be better apart from me, especially once I'm no longer able to take care of him. Now, I've talked about this before. I've got links to two blog posts over on the blog. You can find that at www.havenofhopeforme.com. This originally posted in August of 2021. Now, both of these um, blog posts talk about this idea in more detail. Now, here's another way to look at it. I choose to live my life as consistently as possible. I've chosen to make integrity a high priority in my life. Therefore, I must follow through with what I say I'm going to do. Now, I've said I'm going to move AJ out of our house, and I'm now working on that point. But another aspect of this consistency is having as consistent and similar of an expectation for both boys as I possibly can. Now, if I expect Sean to move out and live independently, why wouldn't I expect that for AJ? Okay, so AJ's independently is going to look a lot different than Sean's independently. And that's fine. But what I'm striving for is that both boys are living as independently as they possibly can to the best of their ability. So where does all of this leave us? You know, honestly, I'm not totally sure. But here's a few thoughts. First of all, work to keep an open mind. Now, maybe you'll discover a solution that you hadn't considered before. Or maybe your loved one will come up with a, a way to solve the problem. Also, be willing to accept the, or assess the situation when it arises and make a decision then, based on the current situation and facts. Now, while it's nice to have an idea of where you're going, and trust me, I go there all the time, be willing to step away from those ideas and assess the current situation on its own merits. You might find that you'll make a different decision because of this objectivity. Also, seek, to, seek advice from others knowledgeable of the situation and potential solutions. Friends, family, and professionals all have valid perspectives. Seek their counsel, consider their input, input, and then make the best decision you can. And finally, remember that no living situation is permanent. While I personally believe that marriage is for life and divorce is not an option, where your loved one lives 
is not a permanent decision. It can be changed. And if your loved one does marry, where they live can change. Now, like I said at the beginning of the series, these are just some of the many musings and ponderings running around in my head these days. Now, this one obviously hasn't completely solidified in my mind. And I apologize if it's more meandering than and more less thought out than usual, but hopefully it's given you a few things to think about and maybe even pointed you in a direction or two to consider if, as you seek an answer for your loved one. So my question for you this week is this, what do you can think about your loved one marrying? I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can leave me a comment below or you can leave me a comment over on the blog. Again, that's at www.havenofhopeforme.com. This is from August of 2021. If you prefer, you could also email me at Christy, C-H-R-I-S-T-Y, at havenofhopeforme.com. I'm continuing to ponder my way through this one so that I can continue to say that life is good and there is never a dull moment.